guys, Jennifer here <clears throat> with a new question. The question is, recently, thanks to the age of information, people uncovered the books that were not included in the Bible, such as Enoch, Jasser, Jubilee, um, the Apocrypha. I mean, you can go on and on and on. Um, how can a smart Christian discern whether these books hold importance or whether they're nonsense? And what makes them different from the Bible stories that make the cut? Well, the 66 books that we have are canonical. They're, they are the canon. The canon meaning a measuring device like a staff or a ruler. They were the standard. They were inspired by God. We knew it's to be so, you know. And uh, they were the standard by which every other work was was tested against. So if that makes any sense and... You know, in Luke 24, 44, um, Jesus validates the Old Testament himself with his, with his own tongue. He says, then he told them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled right there. He validates the Old Testament because there are five books of the law. There are 13 prophets and there are four psalm books and he validates them right there okay so if you trust god and his word which i hope you do um we know that these are the canon they are the standard so and everything else is is tested against them to see if they fit in um and there's a group of people and they made up some pretty big words to uh to say that Anything that was canonical and was let straight in without debate. This is a big word I'm going to get ready to drop on you. Probably won't say it right. But these, all these books that were not debated. And there's a bunch of them and I would list them. But it would be retarded because it'd take me a full minute to do it. Um, is homologamena. And it means that they were not debated at all. A lot of them weren't. Um, a lot of them just came right in. It was like everybody got in a room. They're like, hey, is this the color blue? And everybody's like, yes, it is. And they're like, all in agreements. Everybody said, I, and they say, cool, let's move on. <clears throat> now there's another word. It's called antilogomena, antilogomena. And these are books that were debated. So <clears throat> some of those books were James because they thought that maybe uh, in the book of James um, was teaching like that you could get to heaven by works and not, not by, you know, Christ. Hebrews, because the author was unknown, 2 Peter, um, 2 and 3 John, because uh, they thought that they were too personal. Jude, because there was a quotation, they think, from First Enoch, which we're not even super sure that that's a quote from Enoch. Um, and Revelation, for the <clears throat> same kind of reasons. So some of the books were, were debated, you know. But in the end of all the great debate, those ones obviously made it in because we recognize those <clears throat> book titles. Now I'm going to say another really long word. It is pseudepigrapha, which means false writings. They fall into a category of books and scrolls and whatever you want to call them that were always rejected by everybody. Okay. So in this group of the people who are deciding what's going on, they're like, Hey, is this blue? Or I mean, is this pink? And everybody's like, well, no, it's not. Are they canonical? Are they God breathed? No, get rid of them. Some of those books were like the Gospel of Judas because it was, you know, riddled with Gnosticism, you know, like Greek, it's Greek philosophy and like Christianity trying to be mushed together. And uh, it was kind of like um, Old Testament God, bad, New Testament God, good. Mm, sound familiar? Um, that's why it was outright gotten rid of. Um, the Gospel of Thomas, because it was written way after the New Testament, and it also it has a fictitious author, and it's also agnostic in nature. Um, the Nag Hammadi uh, scrolls, it's also agnostic in nature. Uh, uh, the theology talks about Jesus being created, which we know that Jesus is the creator. He's not created like angels were created, like Adam and Eve was created. He, he wasn't created. If we start getting mixed up on the very foundations of our beliefs, and this is a foundational, you know, crack. These are why these books, um, 
and it was written in the second century. These are why these books didn't make the cut because they had so many mistakes that it was plain. So, you know, you have your brand new 2019 Toyota or your Chevrolet even better. Your Chevrolet and you pull up to one from the 1920s. Just by looking at it, you know the time in between them. Okay, they're nothing alike. Just by looking at these, these guys could tell the distance of time between the writings. Um, they could tell that they weren't obviously not written by the people that they said. And a lot of these books were, were had um, false authors. They were, were lying about who they said that they were. Um, like Enoch, it wasn't written by Enoch. It was supposed to be written by his great grandson. But how far the writing was out, it's impossibility as a false false person you know he said he's not who he said he was so right there they're lying why would we trust what they say in their books um so that's why some of these books they they were not debated they did not make it in period so let's talk about some of the books that are in the bibles bibles not bible like if you have a catholic friend you'll notice if you ever picked up a Catholic Bible that there's seven extra books in there. Um, where did they come from? <laughs> They're a part of something that's called the Apocrypha. So why don't we have it in ours? Because it's riddled with, again, uh, historical, chronological, um, theological problems that we just, that you can't get around. So we didn't put them in, just like the other books. They didn't make the cut because they weren't part of the cut. So let's talk about some of these examples, okay? Um, like uh, in the prologue to it, it tells you right away it's not inspired. And and not only that is that some of the phrases they're going to mess up on. So be patient with them because there's going to be errors. Well, that doesn't sound inspired now, does it? Um, so we're asking why are they in the Catholic Bible? Why are they in theirs and not ours? Because the Catholics kind of got in this big group and I forgot. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to keep moving on. So they got together and they were like, yes, these books go along with kind of our traditions. And as sad as it may seem, kind of have um, scripture in them that back up some of their um, weird ways of doing things. Like um, praying for the dead, praying to the dead, or uh, paying money for... Um, the dead or for your sins which we know is not biblical at all so <clears throat> in the book of Tobit for instance uh, he claims to have lived when the Jewish kingdom was divided that's Tobit 1 4 and then in 110 he claims to have been taken away in the Assyrian captivity now these events are 200 years apart and that would uh and that's supposedly like 43 years longer than he even lived. So we can tell right away that there's problems, geographical problems, historical problems, chronological problems. So, I mean, why would we put it in the Bible? It's just not historically right. It's not accurate. We don't want it there. But again, it's in the Catholic Bible. For what reason, we don't know. So the wisdom of Solomon um, says that God created the world from a formless mass, which we know is not true because Genesis tells us so. So, um, you know, they have their things where they pray for the dead, the Catholic pray for the dead. They, uh, give atonement for sins through alms, through sins. They give atonement for their sins through alms. So that's pretty much saying, mm, just went and raped a kid. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Um, now I'm not a sinner anymore. You know, I can still go to heaven because I paid off that debt. You know, the Bible tells us plainly there's nothing you can do, you know, that's going to make you a non-sinner unless you're accepting the blood of Jesus Christ to cover you. Plain and simple. So we know it can't be paid for with money because alms means cash money. Uh, you can't go murder somebody and then pay your Catholic church to forgive you. It's not them doing the forgiving, which sometimes they kind of... Make it seem like that, but let's get off that subject for now. The pre-existence of the soul, I mean. These are all just doctrinal errors that don't go with the Bible. So they weren't put in the Christian Bible. They talk about also suicide being 
heroic, magical potions. I mean, the list goes on and on. So these are the reasons why a lot of those books, no, not a lot. These are the reason why all of these different kind of books, scrolls, manuscripts, whatever you want to call them, did not get put into the Bible because they are not God breathed. They are not inspired by God. And it was so plain to these people who are reading these other uh, scriptures that either the time was so far apart, the author was um, fictitious, or they had uh, geographical, historical, chronological, or moral mistakes that just couldn't be justified. So I hope this answers your question. I had so much more else to say, but for now, we're just going to leave it at that. <clears throat> I just want to pray, Lord God, that you would cover our youth that they wouldn't be choked out, that the wood wouldn't be choked out by video games or by fights with their friends, families, or that you would keep their love and their want for Christ burning fresh in their hearts. Lord God, don't let the world come and snatch the word away. I pray that you guys would have strength in the Lord, that you would move forward wanting and, and wanting to know more about Christ. And I just prayed in Jesus Christ's holy name. Thanks, guys. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, or if you want me to go like more in depth, um, then just leave them your questions in the comments or just type me up a question on the page. So thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.